Now, each session is designed to kind of enlighten us a bit on some of the new features and the updates in Creative Cloud while using the new collaborative tools. I'm hearing that talked about a lot today, the collaborative um, capabilities uh, to demonstrate this whole end-to-end -end workflow. So it's a bit of a journey we're going on from brief through to uh, content creation through to publication. So we're here to make a lot more sense of that than I ever can. Uh, please welcome to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Richard Curtis. Cool. So how are we? Yeah. Had a, good, had a good morning? Yeah. Yeah? Excited? Yeah. Cool. OK. So I'm going to run you through some digital imaging stuff today. And um, it's going to be a workflow scenario. It's going to be a collaboration. Um, the rest of my team that I work with is going to be showing you this later on. Um, and the idea is around an agency working, as David said, to a brief. So as part of the digital imaging, we're going to show um, Lightroom, actually. That's my tool of choice as a photographer. And we're going to show uh, Photoshop CC and do some uh, heavy lifting in Photoshop for CC. As part of the demo, we're going to create three outputs. And those outputs are going to be for the web. And you can see the web wireframe on the, on the screen now. We'll go through that in a second. We're going to create some. Um, some video out of Photoshop for, for Rupert and also for Iona for the web and design. And then we're going to create something special for Niels, which you'll see a little bit later on. So let's get into the, into the demo. So you can see here, this is a wireframe. And I've been working with Iona and her team on this wireframe. And it's all done in, in Photoshop. Now, obviously, when you're working with um, multi-team and multidisciplinary teams, collaboration is really the key to have a really you know, efficient workflow and make sure everyone's on the same page at the same time. So what we've done is we've used the new Creative Cloud desktop app, which is awesome. And what we've done, we've shared a folder on the Creative Cloud and invited all the team members into that cloud so they can, they can share all the content. Then using the Creative Cloud app, we can work locally on our local computers with the assets. And the Creative Cloud app will take those assets and synchronize them to the cloud. And then for the members of the team, it will then synchronize those assets to the member of the team. Okay? And as you saw this morning in Rufus's demo, you have a version control as well. So you can roll back a version if you need to roll back a version as well. It's really quite handy. OK. So I'm just gonna, um, we're going to explore this wireframe quickly. And you see at the top, we've got some, a text area. We're going to talk about that later on. We've got a video element, and we've got this grid. And we're going to come to that a little bit later on. But let's get into some um, image editing. So there's a couple of things. Well, there's one thing wrong with this picture, and that's the guy on the right-hand side. Really don't want him in the frame at all. So uh, I'm going to use uh, Photoshop to uh, get rid of him. This is a, a classic kind of tool that I'm going to go into now, but I, I love it, and I use it all the time. And I know a lot of photographers uh, are using it as well. So I'm going to edit as a smart object. And everyone uses smart objects in Photoshop? Yeah, of course. Brilliant. Who's not? They should be. It's brilliant. Um, so smart objects give me a way to non-destructively edit an image. And so um, for, uh, Lightroom to Photoshop is automatic for me if I, if I choose that. I'm going to show another option a little bit later on. But what I'm going to do is just create a transparent layer. And because I want all the pixels to go from the base layer into the transparent layer. So I've got much more control, really lightweight editing. Choose my content aware patch and make sure it's in content aware mode. I'm going to come back to adaption in a few minutes. But first of all, I'm just going to get rid of this guy over here. So let's just draw with a pen. Yep, and he's going to go. So we just find a very similar piece of texture. And then Photoshop's going to take that source and map it over to the destination. It's a pretty good fit. Okay, but I just want to highlight a couple of areas, um, and that's the adaption. While that selection is still selected, we can control how much outside the selection Photoshop goes to recreate those new pixels in its pixel making factory. Okay, so very strict is just with inside the selection, and that's going to regenerate those pixels on the fly for me. And it takes a few seconds to do that, but I can also choose very loose, which is going a bit further out into that feather, and you get different results. So it's a really nice way just to try and test 
different results, you know, because content aware is magic, but sometimes you need a little bit of guidance, and that's what that's for. So I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm going to save that. I'm going to save that back into Lightroom as a TIFF and close that down. Now, if you see there, it comes back into Lightroom right next to the original raw image. So you can see already that Lightroom's really helping with my workflow, and that's why I'm using, work, that's why I'm using Lightroom today, because it's really going to embrace this workflow and really make it efficient. You could use Bridge, but I prefer Lightroom because I can organize and manage my data and manage my content, but I can also put keywords in and search and filter that data when I want to. It's also really fast across my, my network that I'm using across multiple images, so I can find images very, very quickly. So let's pick up this. Now, this is one of my favorite, um, favorite additions into Photoshop for CC, and that's Camera Raw as a filter. And I believe this will change a lot of people's workflows. Um, now, I could do quite a bit of this in Lightroom, but I'm just going to go into Photoshop to do it. So edit the smart object again. And I think Rufus showed this this morning. But again, I'm using smart objects because it's a non-destructive workflow. So go into my camera raw filter. And I'm going to use the advanced healing brush that we brought out in camera raw 8 and Lightroom, 4 .4, sorry, Lightroom 5. And I'm just going to draw on the picture the area that I would like to remove, and it goes and finds me an area. But I can also choose visualize spots, and visualize spots will show me a, a mask of the, of the image that I can then work very quickly. So if I'm taking a photograph, I may have dust spots on the sensor. I can use this to find those dust spots very, very quickly and remove those sections. So I can do that very quickly and pick that up, and that's fine. That's great. And you saw something similar this morning. But the great thing about camera as a filter, OK? And some people may be using Russell Brown's um, camera raw filter script, and it was quite restricted. And the great thing about camera as a filter now in Photoshop is that you can run this on any layer, OK? It could be a layer with a mask. It could be a transparent layer. It could be a video. But it can be a smart object. So I want to wrap this up into a smart object. I want to make some more adjustments using camera as a filter on this image, but not affecting the adjustments I've already made. So I'm going to convert this into a smart object. So wrap it up non-destructively. That's a couple of seconds to do that, to wrap it up inside the Photoshop file, and then go back into my camera raw filter and run it again. Okay. So I can now do a multiple raw conversion on the same image without affecting the previous edits, OK? And that's really powerful when it comes to the next section. What I want to do as part of this, though, is highlight her from the scene. So I'm just going to use the new radial filter to draw a mask around her and position that mask where I want it to be, change the exposure down, and just darken the area and press OK. OK, updates the camera raw filter, all good to go. But wait, I have a mask. And on the mask, I can now paint with black and I can paint out elements of the picture, but not affecting the original adjustments I made to do the spotting and all the, brush, all the, all the work I did there. I can do that independently now. Okay? The nice thing about smart filters, I can turn that smart filter on and turn that smart filter off very quickly. But I can also go re-edit the smart filter at any point in time and maybe go work on the clarity. Okay, Completely non-destructive edits. Like I say, you can work on video and you work on any layer inside Photoshop to do that. So it's really quite a powerful way of working. I just want to save that, actually, because I'm going to use that in a few minutes. It's a bit longer to save. It's a bit bigger file. And close that down. OK. So I want to show you another addition to Photoshop CC. I'm going to edit this in Photoshop CC normally, not as a smart filter, because it's already got a smart filter applied. So just to re-emphasize the point, I've saved this as a smart object file. I can get any point in time, go into my blur gallery. Okay. Now, what's unusual about that is that in Photoshop CS6, the blur, all the blur filters, so all the, black, the iris blur, the lens blur, and the tilt shift blur, were all destructive. So what I can do now is include liquify is have those on a smart object, okay, and include masks. I can just change my filter 
Increase the strength of the blur to isolate the climber away from all the trees and the vines. Press OK. It updates my filter, and then I can carry on, carry on working, at which point I can carry on introduce a, a camera raw filter, for example. So I've got lots of functionality and lots of flexibility there. So I'm just going to close that down, so I'm not going to save that, because I've done a pre-work on that one earlier. I want to show this image here, and this is a kind of a, a highly anticipated feature, and I think Rufus showed it a little bit this morning, but I'll go into a little bit more detail. And I'm also going to go into this image as a smart object. So again, the new camera shake reduction works on smart objects as well. So again, I can paint out areas. If I'm getting any kind of fringing or anything like that, I can paint that out. So let's just zoom in. And you can see there that the image is a little bit blur. And that's because when I took the shot, when the shot was taken, sorry, the focus was attained, but then the camera moved slightly, maybe due to different reasons. So we need to sharpen it up. So let's go into the new shake reduction feature. Automatically, camera or shape reduction, sorry, shape reduction will go and find an optimum spot in the picture and go and find me the, what's called the blur trace. And the blur trace is the distance between the sharp image and the blur edge. It then regenerates those pixels to create me a sharp image. I can modify it slightly over here as well. I can see the blur trace by expanding it, but I also have this here as well. So I can just look here and see. You can see it's quite sharp. If I just hold my pen down, you can see it's blurred. So it's done a pretty good job in actually finding the sharp edges for this image for me. Okay? And I've used this on quite a few of my own real-world images, and it works really, really well. Okay, let's just save that and bring that back. Okay. So what we've got is, using smart collections inside Lightroom, my workflow. All the images that I've collected, based upon the keyword and based upon the file type, will now be collected into a smart collection. That means I can start to publish them for my grid that I'm making. Okay? But they're all TIFFs and they're the wrong size, so I need to make it a better size for the website and for the grid. So I'm just going to select them all and drag them to a publish service, which will take those and output them as a defined file size, basically. So I drag them, bring it down to the publish service, go into the publish service, select them all, and say publish. Okay. And I'll republish all those images. And let's just have a look at those quickly. These images are here. <coughs> Coincidentally, they're on the Creative Cloud shared folder. So as soon as Lightroom's finished processing those files, it will all, the Creative Cloud application will automatically synchronize them back to the cloud so Iona's got them ready for her composition when they're ready. Okay? That's done without me really kind of thinking about it. That's just going to happen. And what will happen is the Creative Cloud application here, not unable to sync files, by the way, that will go away. Um, but it will tell me that the files are up to date once they've done all the synchronization. But you can tell at any point in time where they are because you can see the check marks and the blue marks on the actual synchronization. <coughs> OK. Let's just go back to the web form. So we mentioned we've got this grid. I'll bring this into Photoshop now and just uh, open as a normal object in Photoshop. Now, this is going to be really boring. I've got to take eight images and put it into a grid, right? Who agrees? Really boring, a lot of cropping, a lot of resizing, and all that kind of junk. I have eight images. Not nice. So I won't, I won't uh, put you through that. I'm just going to change this to be a color, because what I've got is I've got a smart object, funny that, a smart object that contains the grid. So I can just turn that off, so I don't need them anymore. There's placeholders. And now I put my images into. Right, so. The best thing about, I'm really excited about this. I come from a code, I come from code days. So I, I love this, this, uh, this thing here, which is actions. So using actions, I can automate simple tasks inside Photoshop. So as part of Creative Cloud, we've got something new called conditional actions. And conditional actions means that we can put logic around the, um, the statements. So we can say, if you've got a landscape canvas, then do something different. When you're bringing images in, and their landscape or portrait do something different. Okay? So let's run this action now. It's a bit homebrew. Okay? Not fully tested, it's not production. So it may go wrong. 
I always like to add a little bit of danger in my presentations. So first of all, it's going to ask me to load the images into a layer stack. So I'm going to browse the images that I've already created for Iona, which are here. There should be eight of them. When I press the OK button, it will bring all those in as layers, and it will load me the non-destructive crop. It'll ask me to check the non-destructive crop to make sure it's the right dimension for the website. I kind of know it is, but it's 1,600 by 800. But you could have 800 by 600, and it will lay them out differently in the tiles. Okay? So what it's going to do now is going to crop the image to the canvas that I need it to be. For each image that I've got on the stack, it's going to put it into a smart object. It's going to resize it. It's going to crop it, and it's going to bring it back into the main canvas, then move them around into the right places in the canvas. Pretty risky. So you can see it whizzing through, and voila, all done. So it's really made light work of doing that work for me. But the great thing about this is at any point in time, I can go back into that smart object, remove the image, and then surface back up to the tiles. And what I can then do is just grab this, move it out of Photoshop quickly, select these images, drag them over here, press the Move tool, put it into position, press Save, because I'm using smart objects all the way through, I've now got my grid in the main document. So that saved me a whole load of work. I can then put them on the Creative Cloud, send that to Iona, and she's good to go. OK, so I said it was collaborative. Um, when speaking to uh, Rupert for his digital publication uh, magazine, he wanted to make it interactive and give the user an experience. So he asked me if I would take the frames out of a video and then send them to him across the Creative Cloud so then he can put it into a scrub on his cloud on his iPad. So as the user's moving across the screen, he can then control the movement and see how this skateboard action is running. So let's just play this video very quickly. No sound for some reason. OK. But you can see there, you got that video running. So very quickly, I can extract the frames. So I can select the folder, which so happens to be a Creative Cloud folder. And as soon as it's finished writing the frames at the size we've set and the frame rate that we set, it will just upload those to the Creative Cloud. And Rupert has the image sequence later for his DPS application that he's just going to basically drop into his application. And then he's also, he's also good to go. So just when that's finished, brilliant. Also speaking to Rupert, he said, you know what? I need some title animation on the video. So DSLR footage, all in Lightroom. Um, I want to stitch together, but I want to put some funky graphics on the front. He kind of seen this application somewhere else and thought, I want to mimic that. Can you do it? I'm like, yeah, well, let's give it a go. So really easy to do inside Photoshop, and that's is adding keyframes for text and title information. So you can see here, if I just pan up, I've already done this kind of pre-work, because it took a little bit of time to do. But you can see the actual, all the layers over here. And the great thing about video in Photoshop is it just works like Photoshop. Right? So all the layers, you just move them around. You put your keyframes in, so I want to move from there to there, and it goes and does it really, really easy. And you can see, if I just play the video, what it's doing. And let me just play it quickly. So it's that first few frames that really he wanted to give that kind of immersive deep dive straight into the video as it's, as it's playing. But what I want to focus on is not actually the video. I want to focus on my playhead back. So you've got to have a gremlin somewhere. There it is. I know what it is. OK. What I want to focus on is the actual text elements. So the text element itself is a font called Future PT. This came from the Creative Cloud under my desktop typekit fonts. So we agreed as a, as a team and as an agency to use a certain font type. You may see that change a little bit later on. 
but I can just go to my Creative Cloud, I can just select the one I want for my desktop usage and say download that via Creative Cloud. Behind the scenes, all comes down and plugs itself into Photoshop, onto the Creative Applications, and I can use that. So we've got consistency now across the whole team environment. Now, what I also want to do is I want to work not only on my laptop, but also in my studio at home. And I've got two licenses when I subscribe to the Creative Cloud. So it's going to turn that off. As you saw this morning, underneath the sync settings, because you've now got a very deep integration of Creative Cloud into the Creative Apps, I can now register all my preferences and my settings with those applications so that at any point in time, I can just synchronize my settings across from one machine to the other, and I've got a complete closed workflow which works exactly the same on either machine, wherever I'm working, whatever I'm doing. Even if I'm away from my computer for a long time, I can still work in that same environment. So he talked about Niels very quickly. And Niels asked me, he said, well, because you're working with a client, are you able to agree with them on a standard look and feel for the video, a color grade, if you like, in the, in the video world? So I said, sure, let's do that, why not? So go into Photoshop, pull a few curves, um, for some color balance, and end up with something like this. And he's going to take that into speed grade, which is a color grading software a little bit later on, and you're going to see this image being used to create a consistent look across the video. Okay? So that's me. Um, so we covered we pretty much three sets of outputs for different devices, for web, for different output formats, all just within Photoshop, all very quickly using Lightroom as a medium to really kind of my workflow, make my workflow really, really simple. So thank you very much. <laughs>